Bueno. Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show. I'm Neeraj Chow. The next 20 minutes, we'll talk to Piyush Gupta from Crystal on the on the rankings that came out recently from their stable. Uh, this is a show now that we do very regularly. Uh, we'll still try and ask Piyush about one basic of the methodology that they use uh, in a nutshell, and then get on to four categories uh, where we've seen some interesting observations in the rankings this time around, which is flexi cap funds, the multi cap funds, uh, focus funds, and conservative hybrid funds. Those are the four categories that we've chosen um, out of the many that they rank, of course. Piyush, great having you. Thanks for joining in. Hope all is well. Yeah, yeah, all well, and thanks for inviting me. Good to connect with you again on the show. Yeah, likewise. So, Piyush, just a quick rundown on the methodology and how is it that investors can make use of these rankings? Right. So, uh, uh, today, since we are focusing on equity funds, uh, largely, uh, uh, I'll talk about first equity funds. So, uh, when we look at the rankings, we look at multiple parameters. Uh, this is, of course, a combination of both uh, uh, performance related parameter, which is return and volatility. Uh, we also look at portfolio based attributes uh, uh, on the lines of say, di how diversified is the portfolio? What is the liquidity in the underlying holdings of the fund? These factors are looked at when we put out our final rankings. On the hybrid side, uh, it's a mix of both uh, equity and debt uh, oriented parameters. So apart from performance, which is uh, mean return and volatility, we look at factors like what is the asset quality of portfolio on the corporate bond side? Uh, what is the liquidity both on equity and debt side? And the interest rate risk, uh, which is measured using uh, modified duration. So it's a composite score that we arrive at uh, by looking at each of these factors. And uh, the, then the rankings are published. So this is how we look at uh, the rankings. So any fund which is doing well, on performance as well as portfolio based attributes uh, will tend to come uh, on top. Of course, there are different weights assigned to each of these factors. At times, uh, performance does play a role uh, in the final ranking of uh, uh, the funds that we publish. So it's not that performance has a dominating uh, uh, presence in the ranking. Yeah, so uh, uh, if I were to sort of look at uh, uh, rankings across categories, uh, there is a higher weight to performance in the equity oriented funds. And as we move towards hybrid debt and liquid, there is a higher weight that is assigned to portfolio based parameters. Got it. Okay. Um, and, and viewers, as we've discussed a number of times in the past, uh, and as I think Piyush has mentioned too, that don't look at these ratings necessarily in isolation with which have come on over one month or rather one period. I presume Piyush, you've said a number of times in the past that if you look at the rankings over the period of two or three releases, it gives you a great insight into what funds are doing well and what funds aren't. And maybe that helps people in choosing funds as well. Yes. So, so one has to look at uh, fund ranking over a period of time. And uh, if at all there are any uh, significant movement in a quarter, then it sort of uh, is a cue towards looking at re-looking at the portfolio in case you are holding that particular fund. Uh, if it is on the downward side, uh, let me see. Yeah, got it. Okay, so let's start off with the discussions. Uh, first, on the flexi cap category, mm -hmm. um, I saw an interesting observation uh, that uh, the HDFC flexi cap fund has climbed rankings quite substantially, and the Axis flexi cap fund on the flip side has mm -hmm. kind of uh, gone down quite a bit. Now, can you talk through uh, talk us through this? Yeah. So, uh, flexi cap as a category uh, is a category which uh, allows fund managers to take a location across uh, different market capitalization. So, there is no restriction in terms of portfolio construction. Now, uh, having said that, the funds still have a biasness or higher allocation towards large cap uh, when we look at this category as a whole. Now, talking about these two particular funds, uh, uh, we have seen that HGFC FlexiCap has seen improvement in the ranking. The fund has gone up from rank three to rank one. Uh, largely, the improvement in performance has been driven by improvement, uh, uh, or rather, the improvement in the ranking has been driven by improvement in performance. Uh, fund has improved its ranking from two to one in the uh, performance parameter. Uh, while the portfolio based parameters uh, are still uh, weaker for this fund, uh, it is concentrated at company and industry level. 
given the size of the fund, the HDFC flexi cap, uh, it also ranks uh, lower on the liquidity parameter. Now, coming to the performance, uh, this particular fund has actually delivered highest return when we look at different time frames up to one year. So, three months, six months, nine months, one year, there is a highest performance that this particular fund has given uh, within the peer set. The key driver for the performance of this fund has been largely the stocks in the, in the PSU segment. Uh, uh, these stocks have actually done well in the recent quarter and rather in the recent period, which has meant that the performance of the fund has gone up uh, during this period. Uh, and these stocks largely belong to sectors like power, energy, auto, uh, uh, and again, uh, dominated by PSU stocks which has actually uh, helped its uh, improvement in performance. At a sector level, uh, the fund had lower allocation to IT or software, which was a weak, weaker performing sector uh, during this period. That has also helped uh, uh, in protecting sort of a downside in the fund. Uh, coming to access, uh, access uh, uh, we have seen that over a period of time, there is a decline in performance of this particular fund. Uh, uh, or other uh, equity funds within the AMC across categories. Uh, when we look at this fund, the fund has slipped from rank three to rank five at an overall level, as well as at the performance parameter level. Uh, by design, the fund has maintained higher concentration, uh, both at a company and the sector level over a period of time. Uh, and uh, what we've seen is uh, both the sector allocation and stock selection has been uh, adverse from the performance perspective, which has meant that the fund has seen decline in its performance. What we also see is fund, uh, this particular fund and access funds in general uh, tend to have higher cash allocation. So despite having uh, higher cash allocation in the recent quarter when the markets actually corrected, uh, the fund was not able to protect the downside. So it's basically the adverse stock selection and sector allocation that has sort of contributed to its decline in, in its performance. So something that worked for it in the recent past, in the last two years during the COVID era, is kind of coming back to bite it, you're saying? Yeah, so, so uh, yes, I agree. So, so in, 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 the, in the earlier period, both the sector and stock uh, selection was playing out favorably for this fund, which is not happening uh, as we look at the recent period. Got it. Okay. Now, what is happening is uh, is is that and and as so many people talk about the quant mutual fund schemes which are top quartile or actually the the, the best performing funds across various categories and i see that for example in the multi cap fund the quant active fund mm -hmm. is right up there and i see that across some of your other rankings as well as the ratings of some of the other uh, uh, other companies as well or other uh, raters as well now wh what's happening here piyush i mean you guys would have seen this over the last few quarters that they have kind of managed to stay at the upper end is it yeah the size that is working for them is it something else yeah so so size a uh, 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 smaller size does provide flexibility to the fund manager and also th their style is uh, uh, different from the others uh, within the peer set uh, so this particular fund uh, the quant active fund in fact, has been ranked one in the last four quarters continuously. So there is that bit of consistency that we see in the performance. Large part of its ranking, uh, high ranking, is driven by its performance. Uh, again, the portfolios are constructed with uh, high conviction concentrated bets at the uh, company level. So they have those select stocks that they uh, make it part of the portfolio, which has which have done well uh, in terms of performance. Uh, what we also observe is that the, the fund doesn't have any sectoral bias, which means that the fund is fairly diversified across sectors. So it is the stock selection within those sectors, which are part of the larger universe, is what is uh, favoring well for this fund. Uh, what we also observe is, unlike uh, other equity funds, the, this particular fund tends to have lower horizon. Uh, in terms of uh, stock uh, exposure. So they tend to have uh, lesser time horizon compared to other funds within the mm -hmm. cap. Uh, 
Having said that, the fund has been able to beat the benchmark as well as category over one year as well as three year period. That has sort of helped the uh, fund. The other trend that we are observing in this fund is, uh, if you look at earlier period within a three year uh, uh, time frame, uh, there was lower allocation to uh, say large cap stock, which has gradually improved in the recent period. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and to that extent, the exposure to the small cap stocks were higher earlier, which has come down in the recent period. And when we look at the contributors also, that has also changed accordingly. So in the initial period, it was the uh, the small and mid cap stocks which were contributing to its performance. Uh, but when we look at the recent three month period, it's the large cap stocks which are the key contributors. So, like I mentioned, the fund tends to have lower horizon. They churn their portfolio quite actively, which is visible when we look at the contributors. Also, the contributors which were there earlier in the earlier period have changed uh, completely when we look at the recent contributors in the portfolio. Interesting. What a lot of people might in, in, in earlier times consider to be a vice is actually turning out to be a virtue for quant. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. And at this stage, at least we see there is a, a performance that is playing out for this particular fund. Interesting. So higher churn, but it's resulting in great performance for quant funds. And across categories, I think you see quant funds being, being quite up there. Now, uh, you know, the reason why I picked up focus funds was again, uh, the same factor that I saw that pattern wherein the HDFC funds uh, saw the HDFC fund uh, climbed up the rankings really well and the access fund kind of dropped uh, in the rankings well. Um, same reasons or in the focus fund category, the, the reasons are different? Yeah, similar reasons. Uh, uh, what we spoke about earlier, uh, vis-a-vis say access and HDFC funds, uh, when we look at access focus fund, it's uh, almost 18,000 crore fund. So, and when you look at the overall category size, it's about 90,000 crore. So almost 20% of the category is uh, with access uh, focus fund. Uh, so to that extent, it's a significantly large fund within the category, especially a category which is uh, by design, uh, construct a portfolio, which is a concentrated portfolio. Uh, the performance has declined significantly for this fund, access fund. Uh, the, the fund rank has declined from three to five. Uh, again, this is a fund which is uh, delivered least return up to a one year time frame for, so for example, three months, six months, nine months, one year. Again, for all of these uh, time frame, the fund has seen a decline in its performance. Uh, also, uh, style is similar to what we spoke about earlier, uh, large cap wires, which is there in these funds. Uh, also, the cash component is significantly high. The fund has 12%, almost 13% rather exposure to cash compared to category, uh, which is about uh, 6 and six to 7%, uh, which means that uh, while ideally the cash should have helped it uh, reduce the downside uh, in its performance, it has not played out even in the three month period. So the stock selections, texture allocation uh, has been so adverse that the fund has not been able to deliver uh, or rather deliver lower return within the category. HDFC on the other hand is a relatively smaller size fund, which Mm -hmm. also provides uh, greater flexibility uh, to the fund uh, when it comes to uh, uh, managing portfolio. Uh, Having said that, this fund also uh, has higher allocation to PSU stocks compared to category, which have done well in the recent period. Also, select sectors like defense, power, energy, uh, these are the sectors that have played out uh, for the fund and which has sort of resulted in the performance or improvement in performance and rather improvement in the ranking within the category. Okay. Um, thanks for that, Piyush. Now, um, conservative hybrid. One, if you if you do have a sense there, or if you do have a view, is conservative hybrid a good category uh, at the current point of time? Looking at whatever hypothesis one may have around rates and otherwise, and equities versus debt, and then within that, uh, the two funds that we've chosen to talk about, the Kotak debt hybrid and the Franklin debt hybrid. Uh, what's what's with these funds? What's been with these funds for the last? Uh, three or four rankings. I don't remember the rankings for each of the last four, but if you have some idea about how they've generally done and what's your sense here? 
Yeah, so conservative hybrid, uh, if you look at current markets also, markets have been quite volatile. So both on equity and debt side, uh, uh, we have seen significant amount of volatility. Uh, given the current market scenario, I think a hybrid portfolio does uh, 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 offer a better option because it sort of uh, brings in a little bit of stability in the overall portfolio. So to that extent, the current market scenario, irrespective of the interest rate movement or equity movement, uh, conservative hybrid will uh, is, is a good option to look at or consider. Now, uh, we are looking at two funds, Kotak and uh, uh, Franklin Templeton Fund. Now, Kotak uh, is a fund which has been ranked one in the last four quarters. So it's a consistent performer uh, in within this category. Uh, and again, uh, when we look at this hybrid fund, there are multiple factors we look at. One is a performance, of course, but there are a host of portfolio-based parameters, both on equity and debt side. Uh, the fund uh, continues to remain one. Uh, having said that, on a performance parameter, it has slipped from one to two, uh, while the overall ranking is still one, uh, largely driven by the, uh, the portfolio that the fund maintains on the debt side. It's a, uh, a, a portfolio which is dominated by sovereign or guild securities uh, with relatively lesser exposure to uh, papers which are rated below AAA, which means that uh, liquidity on the uh, of the portfolio on the debt side is superior compared to the PSA. Uh, what we also observe is uh, the the uh, the portfolio uh, has a good amount of exposure to securities which are above five years. Now, in a current market scenario where the yields are hardening, uh, uh, that portion of portfolio, which is on the longer end of the curve, uh, is adversely impacted, which also gets reflected in terms of uh, recent decline in its performance. Having said that, the overall ranking is still uh, one for this one. Uh, so th that's uh, one bit. Uh, when we look at uh, Franklin Templeton, now Franklin Templeton is a fund which is uh, rank three in our ranking uh, it has seen improvement compared to the previous quarter so in the previous quarter it was ranked four uh, again for this particular fund uh, while the performance parameter is uh, aware the fund is ranked four it's the portfolio based parameter which has led to the improvement in the ranking so on the concentration parameter, it is ranked two. It was ranked five earlier, so which is a significant improvement in the diversification of the portfolio. Even on the asset quality and liquidity uh, on the debt side, the fund has uh, higher exposure to uh, sovereign papers. In fact, it doesn't have any exposure to papers rated below AAA. So mm -hmm. to that extent, there is a significant. Uh, 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 quality in terms of portfolio on the debt side compared to the PSA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's interesting. And and thanks for that uh, two words on the category as well, Piyush. I'm, I'm sure it kind of helps because not too many people understand all the debt categories that easily. So it's great to go, probably do that. Uh, maybe this time we had an equity bias and next time we'll try and keep a debt bias, Piyush. But it was great of you to join us and tell us a bit about the rankings and the rationale behind those. Uh, uh, including some funds which are very large and have a bunch of investors out there. So maybe it helps them take a decision. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for having me here. Uh, good to be uh, on this uh, show again. Yep. Uh, and the pleasure was ours. And viewers, thanks for tuning into this leg of the Mutual Fund Show.